Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're continuing the Alma H1 build, so let's get started. Before we dig into this week's video, a quick recap of what we got to in part 1 of the build, where I completed the chassis and the wheel assembly. If you missed it, I've left a link in the description below. For part 2 my focus was to complete the interior of the H1. For the interior there's a main base which all the interior parts will glue onto and the interior base will then basically just drop onto the chassis. As I mentioned in part 1 there were an absolute boatload of individual parts and the theme continues for the interior too. Overall it took about 90 minutes to clean up any excess plastic off the parts. Once all the parts were cleaned up, I gave them a quick rinse in soapy water. Before I could get started with painting, the base had a couple of smaller parts which had to be glued into place first. For gluing the parts in place, I just used Tamiya's extra thin quick setting span. As always, the painting process starts with the primer. I used Mr. Hobby's grey surface primer and covered the entire base. Next up I had to paint the interior itself, which was covered with Tamiya's X20 medium grey. After the paint dried, I then masked up the painted bits and painted the undercarriage and engine bay with Tamiya's XF1 flat black. Then finally, to top off the base, I covered the undercarriage with Mr. Hobby's 20YL flat clear to protect the paint from scratches, especially during the assembly process. Once the base was done, I moved on to the individual interior elements. I started first with the steering rack and accompanied assembly. First glued these together and now I was ready for painting. I used XF1 flat black for the entire assembly. The seats were up next. As the H1 is a six-seater, there are four individual seats as well as a two-seater which faces rearwards once installed. Each one of the individual seats made up of at least four parts, with the two front seats each had an extra armrest too, all individually assembled. Then, each of the seats had a mounting assembly which had to be glued together prior to painting. For the seats themselves, I decided to use a light coloured interior paint I had left over from a previous build. It's a slight off-white colour and the aim was to try and complement the other interior elements and painting various shades of grey. Once the seats were done, I moved on to their mounting assemblies, most of which had to be painted flat black. During this paint session I decided to also paint up most of the other parts of the interior which also had to be painted in the same colour. Now that all the seats were painted up, I could start assembly. I focused on the front seat mounting assemblies first, by gluing them together, then glued on the seats themselves. This was a pretty straightforward process. 
For the two rear seats, I had assembled their mounts before painting, so it was just a case of assembling the seats to the individual bases. Then finally the two-seater. It just had a simple base, which needed to be pushed into place by applying light force and the seats were done. Next up was the huge two-part center console. It was suggested these parts be painted in a light grey, so I used Tamiya's XF66 light grey. Once the center console dried, I started by assembling the small elements to each. The air vents, radio, some buttons and cup holders were all individual parts which had to be glued to the main consoles themselves. Once I finished these off, I could start with the final interior assembly. Starting the final assembly, I first glued in the handbrake, the gear shift and the four wheel drive stick into place. Next up were the throttle and brake pedals. Once the pedals were installed, the main part of the center console followed. The second part of the center console also just slipped into place. Then I had the four seat belt connectors to glue into place. They were a little fiddly, but once the glue settled, they held their position. Next up, I glued the steering wheel assembly onto the base but this part mainly just clicked in and did not require a lot of glue. There are also two accent pieces which were painted in light grey, which looked completely out of place in terms of colour, but later once the body got assembled it made a lot more sense why these weren't painted the same colour as the base in medium grey. For the seats, I started with the driver's seat and working my array around anti-clockwise until the front side passenger seat was installed. Then I finished off the seat installation with the rearward facing two seater. Once the seats were done, it was down to the final few elements that would make up parts of the engine bay. First I glued in the passenger dashboard, then a couple of other accent pieces and parts, until the final part, which was the upgraded snorkel that came as part of the upgrade kit, was glued in. and I called it good. That's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up if you did. The next and final part of the H1 video series will focus on the body and final build assembly. I'll see you on the next one, keep modeling.